Hello, welcome everyone to another episode of Caspio Labs. Uh, before I begin the stream today, can somebody do me a quick favor and let me know in the chat window that you can hear me okay? And we will go ahead and begin. So do me a quick favor, just let me know in the chat window if you can hear me. And we will begin today's live stream. Again, welcome everyone to another episode of Caspio Labs. I am very excited for today's stream. Loud and clear, all right, thanks Van, welcome. Looks like everyone is able to hear me okay. Excellent. So we have some good and exciting content today in today's stream. Today we're going to be talking about Zapier integration. And why Zapier is so useful? Well, Zapier allows us to connect uh, to over 3,000 different applications to allow us to move data back and forth and also to be able to automate a lot of the repetitive tasks. So why is this useful? Well, let's just say, for example, your company mandates the use of Salesforce. You have to use Salesforce, okay? But sometimes you want to move that data from Salesforce to a different application because Salesforce is not giving you everything that you need. So imagine if you had a Salesforce, a Salesforce account and then you're submitting some data to your Salesforce application, but at the same time, in real time, you're sending that data over to your Caspio application as well. And now you can do something with that data on the Caspio side. And with Zapier, it's a two-way street. So if you do something on the Caspio side, you can have the data go back to Salesforce. And Salesforce is just one example. You can actually connect, as I mentioned, to over 3,000 different applications. And today we're gonna to be looking at three different examples of how we can leverage Zapier in order to send data back and forth. We're gonna be looking at Slack, Facebook Messenger, and also a built-in Zapier application called Translate. So how we submit some data to a Caspio table, we can actually translate that data into a different language and write that data back to another Caspio table. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's go ahead and share my screen. And I'm already logged inside my Zapier account. Again, for those of you who are not familiar with Zapier, think of Zapier, the way I like to describe it is Zapier is to APIs, what Caspi is to building web applications. Okay, they have a very simple point and click interface that allows you to connect to over 3000 applications to move data back and forth and also to automate many repetitive tasks. And right here inside my account, you can see that I have three different Zaps created. Again, as I mentioned, we're gonna be looking at how we send data to Caspio and move that data to Slack. Also how we submit data via Facebook Messenger and how we move that data to Caspio and then using a Zapier built-in um, application called Translate. When we write something to a Caspio table, Zapier is gonna translate that to a, to a different language and write that back into another Caspio table. And to create your first Zap, it's actually very simple. You click on this button here at the top and then you're gonna open the editor and the first thing that you'll need to do is set up the trigger. Okay, so simply here, trigger is an event that starts your zap. All right, so if you choose Caspio, there you're gonna be able to pull some fields from your table. So if you write something to a Caspio table, you can have an action happen into a different application. So one quick example here is, let's say you write something to a Caspio table. You can connect to your Caspio account here. Once that's written to a Caspio table, maybe I can have that same data be written inside MailChimp or Salesforce, or Google Sheets, or another application that Zapier provides. We're gonna be looking at some existing Zaps that I've already created for today's live stream. So let's take a look at my first one. We have Caspio to Slack. I'm gonna demo this Zap first, and then, we'll look, then I'll go through each one of the steps so that you can see how that was created. So what ends up happening here inside my Caspio account, I have it already created. Let me open up the application. Okay, so I have a very simple submission form. I'm gonna do a quick preview here. So when you submit something via the form, let's say today's live stream, um, we'll be talking about Zapier to Slack. Caspio to Slack integration. All right, and upon submission, let me just fix my spelling. Not only is that information going into your Caspio table, so let's find it. Okay, so there's my latest submission right over here. Okay. This is also available inside Zapier, inside Slack as well at the same time. So if you go into your Slack account, you're gonna be able to see 
that are available now in real time. You can also make this to be a two-way street, okay? So if you submit something inside Slack, it also goes back and writes back into your Caspio table. And if your organization is already using Slack, you're probably familiar with this. You might have different channels. I created a very simple channel here called Latest News. But if you imagine if you have channels for your support team, your sales team, your marketing team, and you have these applications in your Caspio account, and something happens in your Caspio application, you can write that data back to your Slack account. So let's take a look at just one more example of this. Here is some random text. We'll hit submit. And almost immediately, even if you refresh the channel, we should be able to see that message directly inside our Slack account. So looking at that Zap on Zapier, as I mentioned before, they use a very simple point and click interface. Okay, so let me expand this a little bit. So I set up my trigger that every time a new record is added to my Caspio table, I'm writing, that inf and sending, writing and sending that information to my Slack account, okay? So you can see that the trigger event is new record, okay? You can also do based on delete or update something in a Caspio table. I have it happening on a new record, okay? Then I chose my Caspio account. That's the second step. Then you set up the trigger. Okay, so this is selecting my table now. So these, these are all the tables that are available inside my Caspio account. And once you find that table, you can test the trigger if you'd like. And then the next step is to set up the action down below. And what I'm doing here is basically choosing my Slack account and I'm sending a channel message. So that's the action event on the Slack side. Okay. Here I chose my Slack account. Okay. I chose my action to feed directly into my latest news. So that's my channel inside Slack. I can choose a different channel if I want to. I only have one over here, but if I had an additional one, I can select that. And then you map out the field. So here I can grab any field from my Caspio table if I want to map that out back to Slack. Okay, and I only have one field in my table called message text. If you guys would like to be able to see additional fields from your table, it's very simple. Let's say we go back to our table and let's say I add another field. So sample field, I save that to my table. If I go back to Zapier, all right, and if we go ahead and reload all of these fields, let me just go ahead and refresh. Sometimes it might take up to a minute for that field to become available for us to select. As you can see, it's not available for me to select yet. Usually it takes a few seconds for that to happen. We can come back to this later actually and take a look at it. Take a look at it, but let me just try it one more time. Maybe even refresh the browser here. Okay, I don't see, oh, actually I do see it now. And there's that field from the Caspio table available in Zapier for me to select. So if I wanna map out that field with something else on the Slack site, I can very easily do that. Okay, from there you can test the action and finally you can Turn on the zap and it's going to be functional. So now every time you submit something to a Caspio table, it also goes into your Slack application. All right, let's take a look at my second example that we have for today's live stream. Um, we are going to look at it from Facebook Messenger writing back to Caspio. So as I mentioned before, it's a two-way street, so you can actually send data back and forth. Okay, so here's my example. I have created this fictitious page in my Facebook account called Track With. So it's an organization name. And let's see what happens if I submit a message to this organization. So I'm gonna say send message. Please contact us to discuss further plans. Something random, we're gonna hit submit. So there's the message back inside my Caspio account. Let's go to that application. Let's go into our table. And there is that message submitted directly into my Caspio table. Okay, let's make one more submission, submission here. So let's say here is a second message. Hit submit back in my Caspio table. When I refresh, there is the message. Okay, so imagine if you're using your Facebook page for your company or organization and you want to create some kind of a ticketing system on the Caspio side. Once these messages com come in, you can actually have other fields inside this table. For example, I could add a field here to say, 
um, assigned to, which can later on become a drop down. Okay, so that I can now assign this ticket or this message to somebody else, somebody else in my organization to handle that ticket or that message. Okay. Let's take a look how we can include another field. So let's write more information from Facebook Messenger because Facebook Messenger does allow us to grab more data from that message. So if I look at my Zap in more detail, okay, so if we expand this section, set up the trigger, okay, let me take a look at my, okay, so that is my account on the Facebook side. That's the trigger, and let's take a look at the action here. Set up the action, and we are actually having a message text here. Let me take a look here. Um, I did this earlier. I uh, just want to be able to see how I grab more fields from Facebook. There is a way. Let me just take a look really quickly. New message. Choose the account. Set up the trigger. Refresh fields. Yeah, so that is the account, test the trigger. Let's expand this. Choose the event. So new record is going to be submitted into a Caspio table. That's correct. Choose the account. That is my Caspio account. Set up the action. Show all the options. So as you can see here, these are all of the available options from Facebook. Okay, so if I wanted to actually stamp the time back into my Caspio table, I can add this field in my Caspio table. So let's take a look. So let's say time. Let me save that. So now I have this field available in my Caspio table. If I come back to my Zap and I refresh my fields, I should be able to now see that field added here. Okay, I'd also added this one assigned too, but I'm not mapping up this. I'm not mapping this field back to my Facebook account. Here, all I want is to include the time field from Facebook. Okay. Let's skip the test, turn the zap on, and let's try this. All right, so now when I submit that message once again, not only is it going to grab the message and store the message back into the Caspio table, okay, it's also going to stamp the time back into my Caspio table as well. So let's try this. Hello, world. And let's hit submit. Okay, there's my message back into my Caspio table. You can now see the date and time also submitted. It's just the data that we're pulling from Facebook and storing the data into the Caspio table. Okay, and you can see all of the available fields that, are, that Facebook has that we can map back into a Caspio table. And this can actually apply to just about any application that Zapier provides. And they have over 3,000 applications that you can choose from. So if you wanted Let's say, for example, to manage your data in Google Sheets, you can submit something to Google Sheets, you can update it inside Google Sheets, and that data will write back into a Caspio table, or vice versa. Or if you're using MailChimp, let's say you submit data to your Caspio table, you can have that data from, uh, for email marketing, you can have that data go back to your MailChimp account to do your mass emailing and things like that. All right, so let's take a look at one more example that we have for today's live stream. And let's take a look at this one here, where when you write something to a Caspio table, there's a built-in app available in Zapier to translate that language for us, or that text, to a different language, and then write it back into a Caspio table. So let me show you a live example first. Okay, back on the home page. Okay, so I have a data page created. So would anybody like to see something translated into Spanish? If anybody wants to write something inside a chat window, let me know and you'll see how Zapier translates that back into a different Caspio table in Spanish. So if you guys would like to see something from English to Spanish, let me know in the chat window and we'll take a look at it. If not, I'll write something myself. I'll give you guys a little bit of time to type. Or I can just grab some existing text from the chat window. Somebody wrote an interesting topic. So let's grab that text. Let's copy it. Actually, I do have one. We sell final expense and mortgage pr protection. IFE insurance. I don't know if IFE is going to be translated, but let me copy that text. All right. Oh, life insurance. There we go. 
I got it. All right, so what's going to happen now is when you hit submit, okay, the data is going to go back into my Caspio table. Uh, here's the original submission inside this table. All right, there's the submission. If I go into my other table for Spanish translation, I should be able to see that translation directly here. So imagine if you're building applications that are localized for different regions. So if you have a Spanish-speaking audience, you can build these data pages uh, for that particular crowd via your Caspio data pages, and that data will be made available for them to be able to see in real time right away. So let's take a look. Inside Zapier, let's expand this. And my trigger, once again, is based on a new record in Caspio. So when a new record is added inside the Caspio table, we have a built-in Zapier application that translates the text and writes that text back into the Caspio table. Okay, so once again, let me expand each section so, the, section so that you can see. Okay, so one thing that I do first right away is I choose my Caspio Cloud Database. That is the trigger app. We write something to a Caspio table. Okay, inside this account that I've already connected. Okay, so you have to authorize Zapier to gain access to your Caspio account. Okay, once you do this in this step, there's going to be a little pop-up here that allows you to connect to the Caspio account. Okay, but it's as simple as adding some information to, uh, from Caspio to the pop-up, and then you're automatically connected securely. Then you set up your trigger based on the table. So that's the table inside the application. All right, you can test the trigger, and then you set up the built-in app from Zapier. All right, so this is the app that I've chosen, Translate by Zapier. Action is to translate the text. Then you set up your action. So basically, you take the field from your Caspio table. It's going to detect the language. So if you leave this blank, it will automatically detect the source language, okay, the original input. And it translates the language into Spanish. You can also choose a different language here if you'd like. They have a lot of different languages that you can choose from. Okay, you can test the action. And then finally, what you can do is create another action here to add a new record into your Caspio account. And here you, again, you select your Caspio action. You choose the account, set up the action. Now I want to write that back into a different table. You can also write that back into your existing table if you'd like. Okay, because this is going to give you a list of all of your tables available inside Caspio. I chose this table, okay, and then I chose to translate the text into Spanish. This is just sample text that provide, that's provided by Zapier. And you're going to close, and then you have all three of these set up. You don't have to know how to write API yourself. Zapier accelerates that. Okay, so you can use the Zapier to leverage all of the APIs with your simple point and click interface, right? So if I test this one more time, just for fun. All right, so let's say today we'll learn how to translate text from English to Spanish using Zapier Translate. Okay, submit. I should be able to see that inside my table here just very quickly. I think I need to turn my, is my zap on? Yeah, it is. Sometimes it takes a few seconds. There it is. Hoy aprenderemos. I can't read Spanish. I can read Spanish, but you get the idea, right? <laughs> All right. So in Zap here, when you're creating your zaps, okay, let's open the editor. They have so many different apps that you can choose from. So if you want the trigger to be on Instagram, so if somebody submits something to Instagram, you can have that right back into your Caspio table. Or if you submit something in Caspio, you can have that be posted on Instagram. Okay, it's just sending, moving data back and forth in real time. Okay, these are some that you see right away here in the beginning, just some maybe uh, frequently used zaps. But you can search for PayPal if you wanted to integrate with payment. You can search for anything Google, so you can have Google Calendars, Google Sheets, Google Drive to be your trigger app, and then you can have your action app. And what's really nice about the action is you can combine multiple actions to create a seamless workflow. 
not only can you have the data go back to one application, but at the same time, you can have that data going to a completely different application simultaneously, okay? So if you write something to a Caspio table, you can push that data to MailChimp, but at the same time, you can also push that data to Salesforce or Google Sheets, and you can combine these actions to create a seamless workflow and to automate a lot of the repetitive tasks that you would normally do, okay? All right, so as I mentioned before, not all of the live streams are going to be one full hour, okay? Today's live stream is actually a little bit shorter. We spent about 25 minutes today. Uh, we're going to open up the line now for questions if you have any. I hope that you enjoy today's live stream. These live streams are really meant to help you leverage different tools and help you accelerate the learning curve on the Caspio platform and how you can leverage the Caspio platform to create more functional apps. And by using Zapier, that's one way to do that to combine and join different applications together to move data back and forth, okay? Which I think is pretty cool in my opinion. So let me know if you have any questions. Uh, we do have a few moderators on the call today. If you'd like to suggest something for next week's stream um, or the week after that, because next week we're, we're gonna be covering how to customize Caspio reports. That's actually next Monday, the topic. But if you'd like to suggest something for a future streams, let us know via chat. Happy to try to incorporate that into our live streams as well. So I do have a question here. Can you perform a two-way inter interaction use case message from Slack updates in Caspio and then Caspio send a response back to, Ca to Slack? Yes. Okay, so you can have it going both ways. Okay, so not only can you submit something from Slack to write into Caspio, but you can have it go both ways. Okay. Yeah, you were very welcome. I'm glad that you enjoyed today's stream. Again, we're not always going to use the full hour. We do dedicate one hour to these live streams, but sometimes it could be shorter than other weeks. Just depends on what content we have. With Zapier, it's pretty easy to understand. It's really just a platform that allows us to join different applications to move data back and forth in real time. Okay. Let me take a look at my zaps. Yeah, this is from Caspio to Slack. I could create a new zap from Slack to write back into my Caspio table. And the process is actually very simple. So when I create that zap, the trigger app will be Slack at this point, right? So you select your Slack application, choose the event. So if you, let's say new message posted to a channel, all right, choose the account. So I'm already connected to my Slack account from Zapier. I'll choose that, hit continue. All right, I'm gonna select my channel. So I'm gonna use the same channel, latest news, hit continue. Okay, I don't need to test the trigger. I mean, I can if I want to. Okay, there it is. Okay, let's continue. And now we're gonna select the action app, which is going to be Caspio. All right, we're going to choose the event, create a new record, continue, choose the account. This is my account that I'm connecting with, continue. And the table is going to be, I think it's almost at the very bottom here, zap here. Let me see what the table name is inside that application. Bear with me for one second. So let's open up the Slack, and my table name is Slack TBL Demo. Okay, so just find something, Slack TBL Demo. All right, and we're going to map this out. So let's take a look. Text, right? So if you write something, it's going to write back to that table. You can also map out these other fields from the channel. So you can also have the channel name right back to your Caspio table and the username right back to your Caspio table. But for now, I think this will suffice. Let's just use text. Um, sample field, no need for that. This is another field available in my Slack table, in my, in my uh, Caspio table. I'm not going to map that out. Let's hit continue. All right, we're going to skip the test. Let's turn on the zap, and let's try this out. If all goes well, if I submit something now directly inside the latest news channel, so here is more sample data. This time we want to write from Slack to Caspio. All right, and we're gonna hit submit here. 
All right, there's the message back inside my table. If all went well, we should be able to see that message here inside the Caspio table. And there it is. Okay. So it's just, it's going to be two zaps, okay? It's not going to be one. There's no way to automatically respond back. So it's going to be two different zaps, okay? Unfortunately, I wish there was a way to do it with one zap, but I don't think there is a way to do that, okay? So it'll have to be one, I believe. Actually, let me think for a second here. Let me go back. So if I write something... Okay, write something in the Caspio account. It goes into Slack. Yeah, it'll just, if I if I choose Caspio here for the action to write back into a Caspio table, it there's no need to do that because we already have the message submitted inside a Caspio table. So it will require two different zaps. Okay. All right, let me know if you have any questions. I truly hope that everyone enjoyed today's live stream. You know, it's a lot of going back and forth between the Caspio table and what you set up on the other application to map out the fields inside the Zap. And then when you turn the Zap on, it should just work immediately. Okay. Now let me take a look. Makes sense. I need a control table in Caspio to manage the response. That helps. Stumped on this for, for a while. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, glad that you enjoyed it. It's actually really cool to be able to see the data move back and forth in real time. You know, it's I've done a, I've done some uh, some really interesting in integrations before with different social media accounts with Twitter and, and Instagram before. Just for me, out of my own curiosity to see how it works, I have set up a fake Instagram account and then I had uh, it right back to the Instagram page just to see what the post looks like, which is pretty cool. Let me take a look. would love to learn more about reverse integration. We have been able to get a lot of data into Caspio. Are there good use cases for movie data from Caspio back to Zapier into other apps? Well, yeah, it depends on, um, it really just depends on where you're trying to send the data. If it's available inside Zapier, they do have over 3,000 applications. There are a lot of useful use cases. It just depends on, you know, uh, where you're looking, where, where do you want to send that data? There's so many different ways. You can send data to PayPal or to Stripe or to Google Sheets or to Salesforce, Instagram. Uh, for production, Trello. If you if you're using Trello for pro, uh, for project management type applications, um, but again, it's a two way street. So you can also send the data back into Caspio. So if there's something that Caspio can't handle, and some other application out there can handle, this is a good way to do it, or vice versa. If another outside application can't handle something, let's say. Um, Acuity. Acuity is one uh, one in. Uh, that allows you to manage uh, appointments, right? They have a very simple appointment management system. It's very useful and interactive. So you can send, you can set up appointments in Acuity, and then you can send that data back to a Caspio built application to manage all of the appointments because they don't have the ability to manage appointments. Okay, so that's um, one limitation on on that application. But with Caspio, you can expand upon it and build additional interfaces. So Kelsey, let me know if you want to expand upon that question. Hopefully I'm answering that for you. If not, I'll be happy to look into it a little bit deeper. Just let me know what exactly you were thinking and how you were hoping to send data from Caspio to something outside of Caspio. If there's something, an idea that's brewing and you'd like to discuss that, definitely let me know and I'll let you know. Because we can quickly find it on, on Zapier's side, right, if that application is available by simply searching for it. Right, so, you know, there's, let me tell I know I saw, let me see if there's, um, let me think for a second. I know Facebook is on here. There's so many different Twitter is on here for sure. Twitch, uh, let's see, Reddit is there as well. So if you have a forum on Reddit, uh, you can also connect Caspio to Reddit if you'd like, which would be kind of an interesting integration. You're welcome, yeah. Uh, is each zap 
each zap is an API call? Um, I don't think so. They allow you for a couple of different, so I have a free account, a free account with Zapier. Uh, they allow you to have up to five zaps that you can connect. Okay, right now I only have four. Uh, so I'm really close to maxing out on the free plan, but tasks count as API calls, right? So every time you make a call, it actually counts as a task on Zapier's side. And the free plan is limited, okay? But if you have a monthly plan, then yes, you're gonna get a lot more tasks and API calls that you can make. So I would check out their pricing plan to see all the different ways and all the allotted limits that you can have on tasks, okay? But this is me just testing, sending data back and forth. That's why you can you see this progress bar and you see this number increase every time I um, submit something and the data is moving back and forth this number will go up okay and as you can see from Anna here every data line is a call yep that's correct all right so again, if you guys would like to see something specific in these live streams, let us know in the chat window. We are collecting your feedback and we would be more than happy to incorporate that into the future live streams if the time permits because we only get one hour for these live sessions. I truly hope that you enjoyed today's call as well. Uh, we did learn a little bit about Zapier and how you can connect different applications. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to set a reminder so that you can get notifications for upcoming live streams. And uh, for me, thank you so much. I appreciate your time. And hopefully we will, quote unquote, see you again in the future live streams. All right. Thank you so much. The chat will remain open. Thank you for your time today. And it'll remain open for another five minutes while we answer any last minute questions here. Okay. Thank you so much. Have a good day and stay safe out there. Bye-bye.